In this video lesson, let's explore palpation of the pectoralis minor on the right-hand side. I'm going to demonstrate this with our client seated. Afterwards, I will show it briefly with the client supine. We have Justin seated here facing the camera, so you have an anterior view. The first thing we need to do when we're going to do this palpation protocol is make sure that we clarify with the client the motion that he or she is going to need to do. And we're going to be using the joint action of downward rotation of the scapula at the scapulocostal joint to engage the pec minor because that's the best joint action that will engage pec minor without engaging pec major, which is superficial to pec minor, and if it were to contract, engage, and harden, it would block our ability to palpate through it to feel our target muscle, the pec minor. So downward rotation of the scapula can only occur via scapulohumeral rhythm as a couple joint action when the arm, the humerus, either extends and or add, AD, adducts at the glenohumeral shoulder joint. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask Justin, will you put your hand in the small of your back? Now when he does that, and you can go back a little more in if you could, his arm is extended back and if he gets in more the best he can, it's also adducted and right now he's relaxed. But in a moment I'm going to ask him to bring his hand straight away from the small of his back which will be further extension of the arm at the shoulder joint. Will you do that Justin? Perfect. Relax. You can go back to a comfortable position. So now that the client is clarified on what he's going to need to do during this palpation protocol, we can now show how we're going to find the pec minor attachment to attachment to be able to palpate it. So the pec minor attaches from the coracoid process of the scapula here and it has slips onto usually ribs three, four, and five. And to find the coracoid process, the protocol I like to use is I begin on the clavicle where it's clearly easy to discern that we're on the clavicle at its medial or proximal end. And I palpate along the clavicle going laterally or we could say distally until I feel the concavity of the clavicle here. Once I find that concavity, I drop directly down and I press in a bit posterolaterally, feeling for the coracoid process of the scapula right over there. Now the pec minor attaches onto the medial aspect of the coracoid process of the scapula, so I can go right there. And then from there it's going to go to ribs three, four, and five, so I'm going to drop my palpating finger pads directly inferior off of the coracoid process. I'm now on skin, subcutaneous fascia, pectoralis major, and then deep to that pec minor. So now let's go ahead and get you set up. Justin, can you take your right hand, put it in the small of your back, and as far as you can get your arm over for a deduction, that's good. And now what I'd like you to do is lift your hand away from the small of your back and now you see me strumming and I'm strumming perpendicular in this direction here because pec minor is going in that direction and relax. Always give the client a break each once in a while, especially here as I'm talking on to explain the protocol. So I'm going to strum perpendicular to the orientation of the fibers. And I want to make an emphasis that strumming is not a vibration little motion. Strumming is an excursion of movement that is off one side of the muscle, up onto it, and then off the other side. And it's kind of like twanging a guitar string. So you really need to have a big enough motion. And you want to do it gently uh, so that the client is comfortable, but you need to do it with enough pressure that you're sure of your palpation. For the purpose of these videos, I will usually exaggerate the strumming motion so you can see it better, but you don't need to be that assertive with your client, as long as you can feel the contour of the muscle. So again, I find that concavity of clavicle, drop down, there's coracoid process, drop immediately inferior off of it. I'm on the really basically scapular attachment of pec minor. Hand away from the small of your back, Justin. Good, and there's strumming right there, and I'm going to go a little more right there, and I'm following the slip toward the third rib. Relax. Again, there it is, strumming perpendicular. I move a baby step, I strum perpendicular. I move a baby step, I strum perpendicular. I lose it right there. Relax. 
So there it is, I can feel the third rib. Now I'm going to go back to the coracoid process and start again there, and I'm going to go toward the middle slip toward the fourth rib. Lift your hand away. I strum perpendicular, and this is all the common scapular tendon attachment. I move a baby step, but a slightly more inferior strum perpendicular. Relax. Lift away again. Engage. Harden that muscle. There we go. There we go. Relax. And there it is onto the fourth rib right there. Stay relaxed. I'll go back to the coracoid process. I'll drop directly inferior. Now I'm looking for the uh, slip onto the fifth rib. Lift your hand away. There it is right there. There it is right there. Relax. Again, st strum perpendicular, move a baby step, strum perpendicular, move a baby step, strum perpendicular, relax. Again, right where I was, another baby step. I think I lose it here, relax. And there it is against the fifth rib. So you can go ahead and put your hand comfortably in front of your body. So the idea of this is by asking for extension and adduction of the uh, arm at the shoulder joint. His hand is relaxed in the small of his back and then he lifts away, directly away. And he does not try to rotate the arm at the shoulder joint. He's not bringing his elbow back. He's bringing his hand directly back. Then we get a nice coupled engagement of pec minor uh, going into downward rotation. And because the pec major does not engage, then we can easily palpate through the pec major to the pec minor. And we strum perpendicular and we follow in baby steps going for the three slips to ribs three, four, and five. Always trust what you're feeling with your palpating fingers. Occasionally, the pec minor will attach to ribs two to four instead. So if you find that it's going a little higher up to rib two and you're clearly feeling engagement, that means that that particular client has that anomaly of uh, different attachments onto the rib cage. So just follow the slips to the rib cage as you find them. And there is our palpation protocol for pec minor on the right-hand side with the client seated. Before moving to show pectoralis minor palpation with the client supine, I'd like to show one other version protocol for palpation of the pec minor. And I actually rarely ever perform this, but because it's shown so often, I'd like to address it. And that is, instead of trying to palpate it through the pec major, we can try and reach in deep to the pec major, as you see me doing this here, and then press back posteriorly against the rib cage, feeling directly onto the pec minor, uh, short of the fact that we're going through skin and subcutaneous fascia. Now, I will make a mention that for anyone that has a pec major that is fascially adhesed down onto the pec minor, this will be very challenging and probably very uncomfortable for the client. The only reason I would ever do this protocol is if the pec major at baseline tone is so tight that I cannot feel the pec minor through it. I cannot discern its borders to then assess it. Uh, we will add in, too, that I need to have very short and smooth fingernails because I'm leading with my fingertips. So, Justin, go ahead and put your hand in the small of your back right there. Relax, relax, relax. And I'll reach in deep to the pec major. And this is really easy on Justin to do, but on most clients, it's not as easy as it's showing here. And I reach in, and then I press back posteriorly, and I can actually feel ribs right in here. You can probably feeling me, you can feel me feeling them right in there. And now lift your hand away from the small of your back. Oh, and there is the pec minor very clearly right there and relax. And we would then explore the pec minor in that fashion. Normally, you can easily get to the slip to rib five, the most lateral slip, maybe to rib four. You, you no, rarely can make it all the way to the most medial aspect of this muscle. But that is another palpation protocol that is often taught for pec minor. And again, I will emphasize that because it tends to not be that comfortable for the client, I don't recommend this method unless you really have to and you only really have to when the pec major in baseline tone is too tight to be able to palpate through. 
We've seen the palpation protocol for the pec minor on the right-hand side with the client seated. Uh, most of the time, our client would be supine when we're working the pec minor. So let's just show how we would palpate it with the client supine. It's essentially the same exact thing. So Justin is lying supine here, and I'm going to sit a little bit over toward the right side of the table for my body mechanics. And Justin, would you place your right hand in the small of your back, between your back and the table, and go as far in with your arm, upper arm as you can. So we have him extended and adducted a bit. Can you go a little more in? Yeah, thank you. Uh, his arm at the shoulder joint, just like when he was seated. And now let's clarify the motion. There is no real room for excursion of bringing his arm farther into extension, but it doesn't matter whether he actually moves. It matters whether his nervous system has the intent of moving the arm into extension, which would automatically couple via, via the scapular humeral rhythm the scapula downward rotators to engage, pec minor in this case. So I want you to press your hand down into the table. Go ahead. And perfect, relax. And I see that he's doing that correctly. So I would find my landmark coracoid process drop directly inferior. My palpating finger pads are right here. Go ahead and press down. And I can feel the pec minor engage. And I can strum it perpendicular. Relax. So we would now do the same exact protocol we saw with the client seated, but the client is supine here.